sure like snow. Good evening, ma'am. Let's see your license. You don't have one? What are you doing? Step out of the car, please. Hey, don't run away. You're under arrest. Or at least go have a rest. All right, excellent day today. We've got the uh, diff and uh, front subframe for the rover here. So we can have a look at that. Fellow Chrysler enthusiasts might see a uh, half subframe LSC body with torsion bars. And uh, let's see, struts are behind instead of in front, but uh, otherwise very familiar to anybody with a uh, Nova Camaro or C-body Chrysler. Colin has gotten this all redone, so it's looking very good. Got boots, ball joints, bushings, everybody is done. Differential, also ready to go. Look at the quality of the components on these cars. Big castings and forgings, and look at even that, even the e-brake thing, just absolutely beautifully done. Looks like they've had it all painted or powder coated. Looks really good. Also looks kind of heavy, so that's our next job. Okay, uh, well, that's pretty close. Well, should be pretty good. The center of the div should be in line with the center of the rotisseries. We're going under eight or ten inches. Okay, we'll further eight or ten inches. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, there you go. Right there. That's right. about right. Okay. All right. Good. Now, the front subframe is probably easier to deal with with the car tilted. Very good. So, uh, let's take the uh, rack right out of there. Well, this will pull out now. Yep. Yeah. Uh, do you want to lift the bolt up there, Devin? It's a calibrated tap on it. Okay. What can be left out at the front? Oh, we just lift uh, is it right here. Right there? Yeah, this is fine right here. Okay. So we're just going to let it right down to the bottom. Right, right down. Okay. Right to the bottom. Okay. Right, ready? Right. Up. Okay. Good. We're down. Okay. Okay. There you are. Yeah, that's as close as we're going to get. Yeah. Yep. And uh, it's, it's level, too. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Oh, that's exactly what yeah. we want. Let's get our bolts ready. Remember on the assembly line, you did this in 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that should be pretty close. Okay. Now it's on wheels, too. Who's pinning? Okay. We need so to go forward a little? It comes... No. No. Or backwards. Back. back. Staying on. Uh, a little bit your way and up, Devin. I don't have a whole lot of pump here, so give me a second. I get more pump as we go. Staying on. Okay, now we can kick the whole... It's got to come my way a little bit. Yeah, that's yeah. all right. Yeah. I'm going to kick the jack at the front. You guys clear? Yeah. yeah. Okay, watch out. More. A little, a little more, hey? A little, a little more. more. Yeah, a little more. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah, Thomas is lined up. Okay. Okay. So you got it actually in? It's actually started. Okay, because well, we can easily jump Okay, yeah, it needs back. to come, and this side needs to come up a little bit. Well, the whole thing needs to come up a lot. Okay, okay, well, then jack it up. Yeah, you <laughs> Pretty close here, fellas. Look at that, that's gonna just roll right into its hole. Alright, okay. oh. good, good. This one is not like right. that. Are we gonna have to do some. Yeah, yeah that's okay. We can do all kinds of that. Okay. 
So I got this one started in here, in the back. If we get them all started except for that one, Devin. Yeah. We're going to have to start in here. No, I'm not catching oh. this one. Because if we suck it straight back, the other one should drop in a little bit. Straight up with the substrate, jack it up because Tom's still on a bit of an angle. A little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. Now, Tom, have any better luck now? Yep. Yes. Can you try to start the bite? Way. Start the bite? Yeah, I think so. I think we're there. Yeah. yeah. You'll feel it. There you go. Something. Yeah, she did something. Yeah, she did. Yeah, yeah this one's the same. It's already gone down there. Right. Don't even worry about that one. That's my problem. Okay. okay. <laughs> you, both you, down you, you claimed it now, Scott. Yeah. No, I'm totally well, it, it, there's a lot of things that could be wrong with that. Yeah, other that whole corner of the car, that's why it's still apart. Yeah. That's all still apart for a reason. And the thing is, if those are tight and these are all in, it's and perfect. that one doesn't fit, then you know that's the problem. <laughs> Well, if you're going to come back tomorrow, then do the wheels and shit tomorrow. So you're, you're up at 7 again tomorrow morning? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can just go to bed then. Uh, do you we know where those nuts are? Oh, they're right there. Yeah, so we'd lose them. These ones here? Yeah, yeah those, those ones too. in the two plates. Well, we're already touching here, Scott. Hmm? We're already oh, touching. Oh, great. I was going to wait till he poked his head out and throw it at his face. People always catch things when you throw them at their face. Even if they catch it with their face. <laughs> well, most people will protect their face, so they'll do something to get it. <laughs> Either way, it's going to slow down. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's close enough. Laura wanted a kind of a dune buggy anyway, right? <laughs> yeah. Turn it into a dune buggy. Slap in a 350 and all we're good. Nah, we'll LS swap it. LS swap. These cars, these cars are slow. The funny thing I, I always thought is on the dashboard, the warning that you're not supposed to shift it into the, the overdrive. You're not supposed to shift it down at more than 100 miles an hour. That's what the label said. And I was oh, like, yeah. Who would be driving this car 100 miles an hour? <laughs> well, and I don't think. think you is there a road long enough in England that you could? Like, yeah. These cars are really well engineered. It's just that they, well, they, they were, were designed to be quiet and comfortable and they had no intent of making them fast and they succeeded. Well, I, when, as soon as they put the B, the Buick yeah. engine yeah. in, then, they well, were then it was, everybody car. agrees, it was the car it should have been the whole time. Yeah. But, Do you want to take it off the rotisserie? Yes, let's get this thing right out of the way here. She's free. Off she goes. First time sitting on the First time in several wait, years. Wait. Nothing under wait, there? Yes. No, there's lots under there. It's, yes, exactly. There is. Oh. Yeah. Like okay. Good call. And we're good. Beauty. Look at all the room in here now. First time on wheels in how long? Oh, a couple of years. I don't know. <laughs> all right. We are back at the rover it's uh i think it's wednesday like who cares um there we are i've lightly tossed on a few of the panels just to encourage myself to keep going uh so far so good everything here the like, very first light toss but looking good there looking good here nice and even so what have we got for problems all these rovers seem to have a bigger gap between the front and rear door than anywhere else. I'm not going to sit here and hang myself over that. If they're all like that, that's just the way she goes. Uh, it's just that was how they were jigged up at the factory. There are a few things we do have to fix. For some reason, it's a little tighter there, but it's even everywhere else. And moving the door ahead is just going to make this worse and lifting the door up to make the gap bigger here is going to make that is going to make everything else worse. It's nice here, it's nice there, it's nice here, it's nice at the bottom. This door is nice. So that is uh, 
that is something I think we can tweak out. It probably looks like it was rubbing there before, so that's just, uh, it's very tight. Very tight to here. So, you know, there's no accident damage on this side of the car. So whatever we're looking at is how they were put together. If I move this door ahead to get that a little bit better, then this gap gets egregiously large. So, I mean, here's decent. Fender's just thrown on. Once we lift the fender into place, that all looks pretty decent. I can't push the fender in at the bottom because there's a broken off screw still sitting in there. So we got to pull the fender back off, get that out of there. Anyhow, it's just hanging on with a bolt or two, just to give us a little bit of uh, encouragement to keep going. So, subframe back in, five out of the six bolts dropped right in their holes. Unsurprisingly, this corner where the original accident damage was, if you look from the top, the, it's not lining up at all. Now, because I've cut this away here to repair all the damage in here, remember this was all folded up. So I've cut the stiffener off of there and I've ironed all that out. But there is some residual stress in the, the in the vehicle. So, but you can see it's not really very much. I could just push that over with my knee. So I'm not too worried about that. What I am concerned is I think we want to move this apron ahead. So it means that there's a tiny bit of stress still back in here. So my plan is we're going to winch this over with a strap. What we have to do is we have to push on here. So we're gonna push against the frame and we're gonna try basically to push this ahead and take whatever stress out of here. The tendency if we push on here is that this apron is gonna to wanna to move outwards. So the first thing I wanna do is tie the apron and pull it towards the driver's side of the car so that when we push on it, uh, it'll line up the hole rather than just push outwards. So that's a bit of a job, but that's the plan. And once we've got that bolt dropped in and tight, that should take care of it. So the idea is to push it past where it's got to be so when it relaxes, the bolt just drops right in. That's the goal. Once that bolt drops in, then you know that we're good. Uh, the subframe looks excellent. Everything is perfectly straight and true and in excellent condition. We're shaping up here. Uh, we just temporarily threw the wheels on. All that still has to be taken apart and cleaned and brake calipers and everything installed. So that's uh, just temporary so I can move the car around if I have to. I'm pretty excited to get at this. Uh, we've been, you know, a lot of things got in the way of the Rover, not the least of which was my own uh, pet project there. So let me, get, uh, let me get some kind of a setup on here and we'll have a look at it. Oh, who You having fun today? Oh well. Okay, so this is the setup I'm going to use. This rig here is more or less just to stop the apron from wanting to move out when we pull on it. So we can see we're very close already, but that needs to come ahead. You can see the angle on it there. That should be somewhere like this. And like that. So this area has to come ahead about, it's about an eighth of an inch. So it's not a big deal. We're lined up very nicely this way now. Well, we could come a little more. The beauty of this is that it's very adjustable. And then there we go. So, shit, the bolt might almost get in. I'm just gonna see. Hmm. Nope, not yet. Okay, well, that was the plan anyway. Yeah. Next thing is you have welded that uh, piece of 90 here. So we're gonna push on that and that's gonna drag this whole assembly ahead a bit and we're just gonna push against the K-frame here and should be fairly straightforward, I'm hoping. It's not the most complicated repair, so. But the trick again, as you can see, this isn't, this isn't really that tight, it's just, but it's gonna help. It's gonna help get this all fitted up nice. You can see right away those holes line up that I drilled out there. Uh, you know, we're gonna be in much better shape than when we got the car. So I'm just gonna push on that. I'll get set up and we'll have another look.
I'm going to push it a little bit past. So close. Okay, there. Okay, I'm uh, a lot happier about that. That's going to make for uh, you know much easier final fit. This is the damaged corner of the car, so uh, everything that's going to be a challenge about fit is on this corner and that side. So that's a big one. I knew when we uh, when we took the car apart and we took that bolt out, the whole car jumped. So we knew there was damage there. But as you can see, once you cut the car and fix each piece individually, then weld it back together, uh, we're not really having any trouble with it. I, I really didn't even have to push on that very hard. I never even put the uh, the handle in the Porta Power, so it was not that big a deal. I could see actually this whole corner of the uh, of the firewall and everything pull ahead a tiny bit, but we already had that bolt in, so it couldn't go out of spec. And once we got everything pulled and the bolt dropped in, I just tightened all these four under the hood and the ones uh, underneath Colin did yesterday. So the subframe is in and square and we're in good shape. Now we can fit the grill, we can finalize this. A lot of, uh, a lot of little fussy stuff here, but that's how we're gonna get this thing square. Fit is everything, right? There you go. Get a lighter. Yeah. Hopefully the car is easier to start than these joints. I know. Bullshit. Okay. What do we got here? I think it's an 81. Does that make sense? I don't actually... It's a yeah. late Series 1. CX. I know Series 1, but it's just one of those... I don't even actually know the years of these cars. So... Yeah, but last... The series 1 car, this is one of the last, yeah. I gotta, uh... I gotta get the door. Okay. Really bad. I know you're thinking that I let this car go to hell, but believe me, this thing uh, has been in hell long before I got it. Um, the car is a major rebuild project and I just, there's no way it could stay inside and then leave the SM outside. So it looks dirty, but if you wash it off, it's really not any worse than it was when I got it 10, 12 years ago. Because it still needs all the same repairs it did then. I look at a few of the finer points of the CX. 2500D. Oh, now I have to make the sound again. Oh, there we go. These cars are amazing. It's quite special. Yeah, I absolutely love it. I just got to be realistic about you know, what somebody else should save versus what I have time to save. So, the only other person insane enough to think that this is a cool car we're saving, who is within 500 miles of here, Happens to be Steven, so broken enough in the head. Broken enough in the. Why would you hang around here anyway? I mean, I was. I've been thinking it would look pretty good sitting beside the Monteverdi. This is a very much a Monteverdi summer car. Yes. Instead of Corvette summer, Monteverdi yeah. summer. Yeah. It's dirty and it's rusty. And the it's usual. Uh, dented on the back here. Punched in the arse here. And it's got a bent frame and. And that's the real tragedy. Yeah. The towing company that decked it to my house. Put the tie-down strap 
through the subframe and then got the car to my house and started it. And it, as they will, the hydraulic suspension was strong enough that it just jacked itself up and bent its own subframe in half and tore it away from the floor pan. So that's awesome. So that's, uh, and at that point it was not, maybe that's what saved the car because if it had been drivable, I might have just driven it as a beater. Yeah, you would have so just salt. I might have just salt beat it because it's already rusty, but. So maybe that's what saved it, ironically. So anyway, I went to Calgary to get this car, which turned out to be a major disappointment. Uh, it because still is a major it's still a bit of a disappointment, if we're honest, yeah. yeah. Well, this was always intended to be a parts car, but it was intended to be a, a, a good, good parts, parts car, car, and it turned out that it was a poor, a parts, poor car. parts car. Like, there there's a there's definitely stuff you need off oh, of this absolutely and this does run so i mean and it's a diesel five speed so you really but if any if it's possible to have more miles than this car this car has more miles yeah. and it's been comprehensively i'm trying to think of a nice word for it there isn't one it's been comprehensively all the nice citroen switches have enjoyed been with uh, oh look uh, at the headlights yeah. it's got like it's rectangular been lights been in driven. it it's very high miles okay throw the battery in lights we're losing the light as they say it's a nightmare these cars welcome to your welcome which to your nightmare that, which is Here, which? i'm hooking that around there that's the thing it's still going to be a bit of a stretch yeah are we sure there isn't a smaller battery i am sure that that's the only battery that is available that's, that's okay well then we're not going to use this battery I mean, it's just if it's impossible it's impossible our first battery choice was poor we put a smaller one in that is almost dead but at least it goes in Citroen was never really too worried about if it was easy for you to change the battery in their cars. So Steven's bringing the Econo booster pack around and we're gonna just uh, let her buck. Okay. So the little batteries in there? Yep, it's hooked up. Lights come on. This is probably the first time in what? Over 10 years? Over 10 years you've found a battery and booster cables oh, in less I than an hour. Say start, maybe it was the last time I started this car was the last time we had cables. These new booster packs are huge, but they're really good. <laughs> this is such a great booster pack that it has its own gasoline recharging yeah. system. Yeah. And you can drive it from place to place. Might be the only thing that starts today. This is rather impromptu. We didn't really have time, but I thought I'm actually so I wouldn't have wasted our time, except that I'm so confident that it's going to start. Oh, there! Look, the lamp came on. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. No, this direction is seized. Oh yeah. Hit it. Um, where's the glow plug light? I don't know. Just turn the key on. Count to ten. Oh, there it is. Are the wipers? Is the wiper trying to move? Oh, the poor fucking thing. Okay, they are the coolest car, really. Okay, well. That's, that's been, what, 20 seconds? Yeah, Let's probably. Is there any lights on the dash? No, it didn't come on. Oh, okay. Oh, there is one, though. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. I'm, I just, it, I'm just pushing the clutch. It'll, it'll start. Ooh, maybe not. Wow. Um, okay. We're going to need some revs on the van. Honestly, it should start if it's got fuel, so I think that we need to find the primer and prime it up. Okay, go. There we go. Okay, stop. It's just I can I can see it's it's occasion it'll at least occasionally now drip. And our starter's smoking now, anyway. Smoking in a good way, though, right? It's dripping out of more, out of at least two of them. Where it's not, it's not pouring. It's like it'll drip, and the line's completely open. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Okay. So what's changed? Next night. Yeah. What? Well, the day has changed. The day has changed. Uh, and the game has changed. <laughs> The lighting has not changed. No, the lighting is still shit. Yep. 
starting it. Beauty, join us next time when we try to get it to actually drive itself out of its hole here. Never a dull moment. Another dull moment? Another dull moment. Another disappointment on the way. Yeah, well let's see. Let's it see. should start at least. At least it'll maybe start this time. I'm gonna crank. Okay. Okay. So the only difference is that we've there's a bleeder screw on the main accumulator pump that we've loosened off. So the idea is that we let it run for a couple of seconds to prime itself, and then you tighten that bleeder screw. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a, there's, a, there's a gasket set in the back. That makes me That's right. Good. Like that when I got here. Okay, so just tighten it by hand first. There's nothing in the way, is there? I loosened it quite a bit, so you might want to just tighten it up by hand and then tighten it. See if you got any steering or any kind of loose at all. Because before he had absolutely nothing, right? I do still have the hydro light. Oh, I had, I had a tiny bit. There. Okay, well, that's something. All right. change the tire position and then we'll see what happens. It might need bleeding again, like we're well, getting and, somewhere. And more fluid, and that's the thing, we've at least seen it do something. It now. did something, so. Oh, is that it? Huh? Sounds like it. That might be enough to drive it out. Yeah, it's coming up good, eh? Okay? There, well, it's maxed at the. It's still dead in that. Yeah. That might be enough to get it out of the hole. Oh, yeah. Tails from the crypt, eh? Yeah. It's not happy. Not a happy camp for this thing. Well, we had it up real high there for a while. Yeah, it might be just pumping it out as fast as we can.
hard to say. I mean, there's leaks everywhere, but that one, I don't know. I mean, if that's, that could just be the engine, but how saturated is this? We'll still take it out. But, uh, yeah, and there's some there. But that's, like, this does not equate to no, five that's liters. No, four liters, though, so, I mean, that's good. That yeah. means that maybe it'll come up eventually. What the fuck is this? I don't know. Oh, I think I used to have a golf hole here. <laughs> yeah, this was my golf course, that's right. <laughs> Well, that's your... So you're going to pick up golfing again now? Yeah, that's right. Now, thank goodness we got that trap out of the way. Citroen trap. Yeah, once it come out of the hole, it's fine. Like, that's definitely something there. But... Something, oh, that's the subframe skidding along, maybe? Yeah. So, I mean, these are hydraulic leaks. Yeah. But they're not major. And that one there definitely is something. That's yeah. probably why the rear end didn't come off, but... Yeah, that might need digging out. Yeah. Okay, well, good. I mean, it could have been way worse. I didn't want to see a big lake of slimy, fresh oil everywhere. No. So that's good. I'm happy about that. Fantastic Sunday afternoon. I'm here with our good buddy Al, and uh, he's kicked my ass that we need to open some of the mail. And yeah. so uh, I let Al pick out a few packages here at random. Uh, okay, well, let's see. This one, another pick from Al. That was picked surely on Just sound on and size. Sound. Small and cool sound. It's from Gary and Vivian Baker, Thamesford. Where is that? England? Ontario? Oh. Yeah, Ontario. Okay. What is your guess? Lego? Cassettes? No, it's not Lego. It is. Toy yeah, cars? I thought cassettes, but I don't think so. It's so not I the right know. size, is it? For cars? No, for cassettes. No, it isn't. And the sound's wrong. Yeah. It's, uh... Toy cars? Yeah. It's toy cars or some sort of car park that I just can't wrap my head around. Maybe it's jelly beans. What jelly meats? Jelly, <laughs> jelly beans. Oh, okay. I thought what is a thing of head cheese. <laughs> jelly meat. It's head cheese. <laughs> you wondered why there are flies in your kitchen? <laughs> <coughs> a note. A note from within. Oh, something to add to your collection and enjoy the sweets, Gary and Vivian, Thamesford, Ontario. Well, thank you very much, guys. Don't spill the candies, whatever you do. Oh, it's a it's a toy car of some description. Oh, cool. See? It's like the 1950s car. You know, well, why did it run into me? Because it's there. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a razor blade. Oh, no, this is a plastic razor blade mm. for removing uh, pinstripes and stuff. That's very cool. Thank you. What is it? It's a razor blade for not scratching paint. You gotta oh, take nice. glue off of doors and stuff. Yeah, that'll be handy. Yeah, very cool. And it'll fit in your coat pocket. Provided yeah, your coat pocket right. isn't torn. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Well, that that one got opened first because it made interesting sounds. See? Listen to these tips and tricks. <laughs> <laughs> and again, we're opening the mail in completely random order. So I apologize. We tried to pick stuff that was sent a while ago. And, uh, and we're, we're, we're going to get to it all. We're going well, to. Sure I really do appreciate it all. This one. Oh, well, she stopped rocking her legs here. There you go. <laughs> I want that. Cigarette papers from our friend Mark Palmer. Cigarette papers? Let's have a look. Thank you, Mark. Oh, well, we're fixed Whoa. for ages now. Take some with you. It's actually what he said it was? Yeah. It's just cigarette papers? That's sweet. Yeah, thanks, man. I didn't know you could get packs like this. That's cool. <laughs> the poet was worried that you might have supply chain issues. <laughs> Going in. They buy more parts. Who's it from? D. Wood, Bay City, Michigan. Never been to Bay City. You? Nope. What was his name again? D. Wood. He didn't D. give Wood. a name. D. Wood. This should probably explain something. It's all coming together. 
Hello, Scott Frankers and the agents. Ran across the show a few years ago and I've been watching ever since. It amazes me to see the cars and bikes you come up with. I wish I had your yard. You even convinced me to toss you and Frankers a bone on Patreon. Anyways, while I was watching into the 37 Chevy, someone said something like, They sure built a lot of these engines. They sure did. And to prove it, I'm sending you a chunk of iron from the Saginaw Grey Iron Foundry. Whoa. Commemorating the pouring of 25 million tons of iron in June of 73. They quit pouring iron in the early 2000s and converted over to aluminum. Lost foam casting. My dad worked there until 89. Almost got fired for telling some touring GM execs what he thought of their new four-cylinder for a new car called the Vega. <laughs> he was a Mopar man. Hope it finds a place in your collection. <laughs> That's cool. The good stuff. There's seriously a hunk of iron. <laughs> Here's something for the darts display. So oh. it's only a piece of the pack. Mail pouch tobacco. Well, I'll be damned. Watch bros. Well, that'll go on the wall. Absolutely. Yeah, that's I love sweet. That stuff. Definitely. Definitely. More for the dart set. This is the best. Because you can't get these anymore. What? Fucking plastic bags. <laughs> plastic bags for days. Look at this. Oh, it's. Man. Oh, there is something heavy. Here there. it is. Oh, man, that's sweet. Look at this. What is it? That's it's cool. It's a commemorative yeah. Chevy Stovall. What? A chunk of iron from the Saginaw Great Iron Foundry. That's cool. I Oh yeah. Oh, there's the foreman. What's up, Tom? Check it out. What came in the mail? How cool is this? Just came in the mail. That came from the foundry. Commemorating the pouring okay. of 25 million tons of iron at the uh, Saginaw Iron Foundry. Oh, okay. That is cool, right? Yeah, it's Isn't neat. It? So we'll have to put that on the shelf. Yeah. Live, not live. Totally live. Totally live. Unrehearsed, anyway. Filmed 100% live. Filmed before a live studio audience of Trev and Frankers. For our buddy Phil in Perth, Ontario. Thanks Perth. again. Perth. Perth. Yeah, kind of like in Australia. Phil doesn't fall around. Wrapped. And it's bubble wrap. Oh, is it a car? Might be a, is, you want a new car. Is it a brand new car? No, it's a flat thing. And oh. it's, what are you talking about here? Huh. What emblem? What? I'm not sure what for. It's nice though. Is that for a 37 Chevy? I don't know, maybe. Is that what you're missing? Well, I am missing one. Um, you would wow, know. Phil, that's, uh, that's kind of uh, generous of you, buddy. What do we even say about that? It's, it's in for? good shape. It really is. It's like, it's exceptional. Yeah. No note, hey? Phil the mystery man? No, no. Just a lot of bubble wrap. Well, we're going to look into it. That's sweet. The snow is coming, and uh, I really want to get this 37 Chevy uh, operational this winter. So I've been talking with Matt and Jim at Strong's Garage, and they have a cylinder boring machine that bolts right to the block and would allow us to sleeve this engine in the car. It makes more sense to take the car to them than to try and bring all that equipment here. So today I'm going to uh, start uh, taking this car off of stands and get it ready to take over to Strong's and we're going to with any luck uh, have a chance very soon to bore this engine once we get it sorted out I'm gonna put it back together and then we'll uh, spend uh, I hope as much time as it needs this winter just finishing the brakes and I've got some cosmetic things to do and and whatnot and uh, this might be a fun car to have on the road next summer. One of the nice things about Canada is that uh, you have plenty of winter to work on your cars. So let's see what we're doing here. 
Yeah, number five cylinder. Uh, yeah, badly damaged by corrosion from a blown head gasket. The cylinder head is already done, ready to go back in. All the pistons are in good shape and ready to go back together. I've got my 1937 shop manual, uh, which is very handy. That'll be really fun. And we're going to pick away at this lovely Chevrolet this winter. Got my frost shields in case things get frosty. <laughs> and we have the uh, new sleeve from eBay and uh, very inexpensive. So looking forward to all of that. So first thing, get her down off of stands and start getting it onto the trailer. Sounds easy, but of course there are multiple cars in the way, which also are not currently operational. Hi, Boo. So we have to move the 40 Dodge out of the way, and that should allow me to get the Chev out. So I'm going to get the Chev uh, first, and the tractor should be willing to move the Dodge. So that is the plan. It's already snowing. I don't know if you can see. By the time I get this on the trailer, I expect everything will be covered in snow, and it looks like it's going to stick around. We did very well this year to get to November 1st today without any real snow, so can't complain, but that's coming to an end now. So everything just gets exponentially more difficult when it's snowy and miserable. So are you coming in there or what? So, ready for winter? Yeah, you love winter, don't you? Yeah. What a good girl. going about as well as I expected it to. Just not to say well, but you know, we're getting it. This is just so much easier when stuff runs or you have help or, you know, if it was easy, everybody would have antique cars. Okay, I gotta push this back now and reposition. So far, so good. The only goal that matters is no damage and uh, safely on the trailer. So. Gonna keep at that. Tractors behaving very well. I do have the engine covered up because we certainly don't want 
couple inches of snow, even if we are redoing it. I'm going to strap it down. We're taking it to Strong's Garage in the morning, and we'll uh, unload it there. And uh, when they have time, uh, Matt or Jim will give me a shout, and we'll get at it. But this is part of the trouble around here is you got to do this kind of stuff before everything gets completely snowed in. So, I mean, this sucks, but trying to do it when there's two feet of this shit on the ground is even worse. So, uh, just uh, ran out of time. I wanted to do this a couple days ago, but you know how it goes. Everybody knows. Nevertheless, going along fairly well. Uh, we got to get this one moved, then we got to get the rover moved, and we got to get the SM moved, and uh, lots of moving. Then we got to put the T away for winter, and I'm only putting the DS away. So, I hope to put the T in the shop where the Chevy was, or uh, ahead of it, where the SM is. And uh, this winter, uh, I get some, I want to adjust the transmission bands, and, and I'd really like to start uh, putting the interior together. Uh, the car has proved to be every bit as reliable as I could have hoped and uh, I'm going to talk to Matt and Jim. We're going to get the generator functioning properly. The third brush is just dead and I think that's why it only works when I wire it backwards. And then we're going to start putting the interior together which is, uh, that'll be very, very cool. Means I'll have to put on clean clothes when I'm going to use it and whatnot, but I think it'll add a lot to the car. Man, I had so much fun with this car this summer. I, uh, I encourage everybody to get some little rickety thing like this. And man, it's more fun, most fun you can have at 32 miles an hour. And if all goes well, next summer we'll be having fun at 52 miles an hour in the Chevy. And man, what a gorgeous car. Look at that guy. What a fantastic machine. You can see, just like last year when we finished the T, uh, I never really got to drive it, and I didn't get to drive either of the Plymouths very much, but that's okay. We got them done, we got plates on them, and next spring is going to be a blast. We'll have the T and both Plymouths, and, you know, if we're really doing well, we'll have this Chev, and, you know, we'll take our time, whatever it takes. I got some fun surprises for the Chevy, and kind of nice to be looking at a project that's not 94% welding. Okay, I'm going to go uh, finish loading that on. It's hard to do holding the camera with one hand. Well, mini braggers, ready to go for a ride today? Okay. Not the most fun day, okay? Let's see how it's going. Oh, well, I managed to hurt my back pushing the car around yesterday. So, <laughs> that's making things more fun. And uh, at least the weather hasn't gotten bad. It's a bit of a drive to uh, Strong's Garage, so we have to use appropriate caution. I guess appropriate caution would be stay home during the big winter storm, but we'll have to use inappropriate caution. Everything's just that much more miserable in the, in the snow, but uh, anyhow, I'm uh, confident. I wish I had my new tires on, probably. <laughs> probably should phone Don and Steven to get some tires. But anyway, we're just gonna drive real slow and careful. We got the Chev. <laughs> got my tire pumping up here. No complaints at all. Uh, it's been such a beautiful summer and fall that this is, uh, you know, I don't even care. So let's buzz up there and say hi to the boys. It's 
a bit of an adventure. And the speed is down to about 25 miles an hour, maybe not even that. There we go. Now if anything goes terribly wrong, we got good video of it at least. <laughs> All right. This is Strong's garage. It won't go wrong here. <laughs> yeah, just go ahead there, pal. Back for some warranty work here. Can yeah. you turn the other way? Stop. Uh, turn towards me a bit. No, nope, other way. Yeah, good. Perfect. Perfect. Straight back. Okay, straight down. Perfect, buddy. Yep. Right there we go. Yeah. There we go. Awesome. Great. Okay. All right, got some nice new white walls while I'm here. Look at that, eh? Oh, look at that. Nice. Yeah. I'm three years ahead of the <laughs> of the next car now. Yeah. I just put plates on the car, on the yellow car, and I bought that exact same set of tires in 2016, I think. Hey, so there's your stagger. You always yeah. Lead so yourself. I'm good till 2030 now. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. Hey, your man. Those. Yeah, man. Fantastic. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Those are awesome. We just... I like tires. <laughs> Luckily, these are classic tires that'll actually... Yeah, yeah work. classic tires that actually... Maybe we should put one on the trailer just to get home. Can you get home? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> up for you. Oh, the trailer, yeah. Another set of 75014 white walls. So... You guys can guess uh, what uh, other car we might be working on soon enough. Okay, we've got the 37 Chev safely offloaded and dried off, and the engine soaked down with some oil to keep everything from getting rusty. I'll leave it to uh, Matt and Jim to give me a shout when they have the tooling here and they're ready to go and some time. It's uh, as you can see, it's not like these guys are short of stuff to do. So, uh, anyway. Uh, please do go check out Strong's Garage and subscribe to them because they're awesome and they're my friends and they have a really fantastic channel and all of this stuff is legit as hell. Maybe it'll go easier on the bill if you guys subscribe. So, uh, anyhow, uh, people were asking about the Chev, so there's the plan for this winter is we get this Chev sorted out. We're going to sleeve number five bad cylinder and then we're going to put her back together, do the brakes and um, as the snow is now fully here, um, something to look forward to for when it goes away. There's just so many cars here to just drool over you guys. Hey, if enough people subscribe, will you guys go easy on me? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> At least they're honest. At least they're honest. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching the show. As always, we have a lot of fun putting it together and uh, very much appreciate all the likes and comments for the show. I really enjoy reading it all. Um, as always, uh, please uh, please subscribe, blah, blah, and uh, please uh, double check if you are subscribed. It uh, does happen that YouTube unsubscribes people, possibly from this channel more than others. <laughs> I don't even care, whatever. Uh, anyway, it does really help. I'd like to get to 60,000 subscribers for the show. Best audience on YouTube. Uh, thank you guys so much. Update on the shirts. I believe they're printed and they should start shipping very soon. So uh, thank you again, everybody who bought one. It was very cool of you guys. And it really does help keep the show on the air. So thank you so much. Sorry, my back is still kind of shit. It's going to be for a week or so, I can see. My own fault, it'll be fine. Anyhow, thanks so much guys, having a great afternoon here. Just gonna go in and get editing here. And uh, we'll talk to everybody soon. This is a regular ah, contributor. Same old shit. <laughs>